Cassie and I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. Michael Ward, who has been nicknamed the Blood Detective for his keen ability to zero in on health problems and find natural solutions. That's right. Dr. Ward, you also have several degrees and certifications, including board certifications in nutrition. And today we have some questions that people have sent through us via email okay. on our topic of aging and inflammation. Okay. All right. So Edward would like to know if it is really possible to re reverse the aging process naturally. Specifically, he would like to reduce his risk of dying of preventable diseases like heart disease and cancer. He also wants to stay active for as long as possible. Well, Edward's got some lofty goals, uh, and I share some of these goals. So uh, let's first talk about this reversing aging concept. Obviously, there's you know, our biological age, and then mm -hmm. there's our chronological age, and our chronological age are aging in years. So you're not going to reverse that. You're here for a certain amount of time, and that's added on, and that's, that's mm -hmm. your chronological age. We can reverse certain aspects of our biological age. So, for example, if loss of flexibility is associated with aging, we know we could stretch and do things to improve our flexibility. So in that, that case, we can reverse that aspect of aging. Aging may be associated with a certain amount of mental decline or loss of strength. Well, we could exercise and gain strength back. We can uh, do mental exercises like crossword puzzles, for example, and we can become sharper math, that sort of thing. Uh, our cholesterol might increase, and uh, all these different aging markers are potentially reversible. So biologically, yes. There's a wonderful book written by Tufts University uh, uh, researchers known as Biomarkers. There's a technical version of the book and there's also a layperson uh, version of the book, but I bring it up because they have all these biomarkers, which by definition are tests that let us know how well or not well a person's aging. And then you do different things, which are generally either medications, supplements, uh, diet, um, exercise, this different lifestyle mm -hmm. things, and you can improve many of these biological markers, which means that biologically at least, we can reverse the aging process more or less for different people. And then let's see, uh, Edward is also asking, he, he'd like to know how to reduce his risk of dying of preventable diseases like heart disease and cancer. So we would measure through our uh, blood detective uh, intake uh, a variety of tests that like something called C-reactive protein and homocysteine and fibrinogen and doing a lipid panels known as VAT panels. These are just a few examples of the many tests that we would use mm -hmm. that let us know if our dietary and lifestyle approaches are working now, meaning if any of those tests or others were abnormal and they're becoming normal, then we know it's working now. But the other benefit of normalizing biomarkers is that by definition, they let you know how things are working now, as I said, but they also predict uh, that someone will have a reduced morbidity and mortality in the future as long as they keep these tests in the normal range. Okay. So, for example, high cholesterol we know increases one's risk of dying prematurely from cardiovascular disease. Mm -hmm. So. But a person may not feel high cholesterol, so we can't just go by how we feel. But if we lower cholesterol, we know we've reduced one's future risk, but we feel the same. So some biomarkers, you'll improve, improve them, and you might feel the same. But we know that each of them carries their statistical uh, advantage in terms of improving how we age. So really, this is longevity. Uh, mm -hmm. medicine, not anti-aging. That's a, a bit of a misnomer. You can't sure. not age, at least chronologically. And he also wants to stay as active as long as possible. I think, you know, Edwards, you know, hit it, he hit it right on the head because it's all about the quality of life. At least that's how I view it. What's the point of living to, to 100 if, you know, by, by age 70, you're in horrific pain, discomfort, and you've got several mm -hmm. other diseases? People are living longer these days, but they're living longer with multiple diseases. And in medicine, they have a wonderful word for it. They call it a term. They call it disease clusters. So we can show that our statistics, yes, we're living longer, but we're not living longer, longer well. So if we... They're living with dis-ease. Right. So throughout <laughs> all of these, that's right, dis-ease as mm -hmm. opposed to disease. Yeah. So a play on words that's very important because, you know, there's health on one end of the spectrum and then there's disease, but then there's dis-ease and those shades of gray in between, mm -hmm. and we want to obviously go this way. So as many biomarkers as we can improve. So throughout all of the series of the videos, we have all kinds of strategies for improving our health and well-being, and then we have our uh, blood detective in 
uh, sort of description of our general approach on the home page of our website that lets people know what our program includes. So it's got some basic things described there, but then again, depending on one's particular health goals, like in you know Edward, Edward's case, we might develop a, a different biomarker plan of testing and then therefore uh, recommendations based on whether we're talking about his concerns, so heart disease and cancer. If it were, you know, psoriasis and memory, we might have a different set of biomarkers on top of the basics that mm -hmm. we do for everyone as a human being. Fantastic. So, so much more to say on the website. So and that's at www.intmadny.com. That's right.